How are you guys doing? Good. Can you hear me okay? All right, that's good. All right. Um, yeah, excited about the talk today. Uh, we have the lightning talks. Starting mine with the, um, the way we approach the um, uh, providing a dynamic user experience with the help of uh, server-driven UI. So let me get into that. Um, I am Naya Makino, Senior Engineering Manager at Meokari, where I joined as an Android engineer back in 20, uh, 2019, six years ago. <laughs> Yeah, sorry for that. And now I manage the, uh, the mobile teams, and as well as the marketplace engineering. Meokari is a C2C marketplace app where you can buy and sell almost anything. Uh, we make the sitting experience as simple and as secure as possible so anybody can become a seller on our platform. We now have a over five million monthly active users and transacting over a video on uh, Aniel GMB. Bit of a history about Meokari. Um, we are founded back in Japan in 2013, and soon after 2014, we expanded to states. Later, after I joined around 2016, we decided to have our own app written from ground up in states. At that point, we decided to integrate React Native as a hybrid app, so we had maintained iOS, Android, and the React Native since then. With the surge of business demand in 29, uh, 2021, 2022, from the stay home demand in uh, COVID time, we make a bold bet in relighting a whole app again, this time 100% React Native. Primary reason include we wanted to increase our engine velocity dramatically without let's say, highlighting you know, double or triple the headcount. We had consistently uh, you know, having an issue highlighting both Android and, Android and iOS engineers and providing consistent uh, user experience for both platforms have been challenging. Anytime you do system level update, such as accessibility and the uh, design system adoption come as a significant effort when you maintain three core bases. So with the help from the Infinite Net, who not only onboarded us to React Native, but helped us deploy to the pool of action, we are now maintaining the 100% React Native. Today, uh, we are working on the growing needs from user who want to have a personalized and customized experience in certain screen. So for example, in a home, where we want to provide unique experience for buyers and sellers who have a different need. And we want to provide the ex unique experience on the same screen. And we want the ability to update the experience without, let's say, waiting for the app release cycles. And we want to find a solution that can fit and scale for more than multiple screens. So today, I want to talk about one approach we are taking, we call it Layout API. In this particular approach, we can offer a native user experience while having the ability to dynamically update the UI. So on the right, you see that there is a Layout response. Layout response consists of two attributes. One is called Layout. Layout is a ordered list of component. And component um, is a, essentially a map to a particular component on the client side. So with this ordered list of component, server side get to decide what component to show in what order. In order to construct a component, it needs to have a content. Content provide relevant information to a particular component. So it may include, let's say, item information, user information, and so forth. Some of the noteworthy content include action. Action is a pretty defined set of action within the component. So for example, when you have a button on a component, we can configure what action that can trigger using this attribute. Another interesting one is called 
attributed string, which is a, a rich string that can contain custom typography, colors, and hyperlinks that you can uh, ingest into the uh, string. With this on the client side, it will look like this on the, uh, the code where we maintain a, a switch statement and given the component from the server side, we construct the layout declaratively. So it may include, let's say, item description component, followed by tags component, and seller info component that you see on the screen. And then with that, we construct the section list or flat list, depending on the screen. So with this approach, now we get to um, configure the screen with what component to show and control the uh, content inside a screen more dy uh, dynamically. It can also um, configure the actions that user can take, as well as providing the rich text on the screen. Some of the challenges with this particular approach that include, we now have a tighter relationship with the backend folks. Backend engineering now not only needs to understand how the layout API works, but also how client consumes the data, and sometimes uh, they also have to understand similar set of the uh, UI creation. So they are becoming a, a closer partner with this approach. Backward compatibility comes as a challenge when we maintain a growing number of component on the client side and duplicating the component and code complexity will increase as a result of maintaining a large set of components. Accessibility comes as a unique challenge in this dynamic set of UI where, for example, in the attributed string, sometimes the string uh, includes links and in providing the appropriate accessibility attribute in a dynamic manner can come as a challenge. With this approach, now uh, Leo API can offer you a more customized and personalized user experience with using the a native, native UI component. So it gives you a native UI experience while having, having ability to update the UIs and control the screens more dynamically. So hopefully that gives you some context around how we are approaching it today and gives you some insight on that. You can find me on Twitter or find me anytime talking about the Act Native Relight or the um, layout-driven UI. Thank you so much.